Welcome back to the program. Now let's find out a bit more about the life of this trailblazer. Chokwe Aluku is a Nigerian-born actress primarily raised in the UK. She spent her younger years traveling and living all over the world, including France, Tanzania, Trinidad and Tobago, and Indonesia. She's got dual citizenship in both the US and the UK, and she speaks four different languages, including her native language, Yoruba. We're delighted to have her on Diaspora Network to talk to us about her latest big role in the Marvel Studios film, Black Panther. Thanks so much, Chokwe, for doing this for us on Diaspora Network. Thank you so much, Ijoma. Nice to be here with you. Great. So tell us about um, your early life um, growing up. What was it like and, and where? Um, well, I, uh, I was born in Nigeria. Um, my father was a diplomat, so I was kind of like that army brat. So we moved around a lot to different countries. Um, but he was very much of a traditional man, and so was my mother. So I think sometimes we were held to a higher standard in making sure that we knew our language, we knew how to pray in our language, we knew tradition. You know, he was very big on that. And I'm so glad he did that because it's come to... It's really helped now in my my life now, you know, existing life. Yeah, so it's helped in your life. Has Have you taken anything into your career um, from your early background growing up in Nigeria, uh, with the culture, the values, the language? Um, do you see that playing a role in the career that you, the career path that you've chosen now? Absolutely. Um, I'll tell you that I, 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 it's so rare to, I didn't know, it was so, so rare to find actors that speak Yoruba, you know, the Yoruba language right now. And so there have been roles that I've been cast for because they didn't find anybody in that age group, like a grandma. I was cast as a grandma in a role, you know? I was like, okay, you guys are going to age me, no problem. But it was just, I was just so thankful for the fact that my parents had insisted that we knew our language, we knew our custom. And it definitely came to play while I was doing these roles and, and talking to the producers, et cetera, in terms of what we would do in this stance, you know, and, you know, so it really, really did help. Absolutely. Mm, and then obviously a, a face like yours in Hollywood, how did you break into that? A lot of people, a lot of actresses back home in Nigeria, all over the world, you know, would love to have been the sort of position that you're in on a film like that with a team like that. How did you break in? I don't think I consciously was looking to be in Hollywood. Um, I always wanted to be an actress. And, you know, I, you probably know my background. I studied engineering and then I went on to do my master's. Um, and I always wanted to be an actress. My, but my parents didn't feel it was a sustainable um, career at the time. So um, I love theater. I love performing. And I used to do that when I was younger and it never left me. So even when I was in corporate America for 20 plus years, I was still taking acting lessons. I was still doing things on the side and, and trying to um, infuse the creativity into my life somehow. So um, it never left me. You know, I was working in marketing and advertising, which is a form of creativity. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't set out to break into Hollywood. I set out to just achieve my dream of being an actress mm. and everything else followed. And I think, you know, once I said yes to that, or once my parents passed and I decided, you know what, it's time. Let me see if I'm any good at it. And I just released it to God and um, everything fell into place, basically. Well, our viewers are, are keen to know and eager to know about, about your, the latest film, obviously, Black Panther, what, what it was like working with people like Angela Bassett, Lupita Nyong'o, um, on a set like that. Um, tell us, just give us some behind-the-scenes info about how, how you managed yourself. I think the first one was, you know, we're here, you know, we don't know, you know, we knew it was something special. Um, and obviously it, it transpired that it became a one point. Three billion dollar movie. I think that the the the, um, the the mood on set was definitely different this time round. Um, we felt more familiar, you know, with each other. But there was also the the knowledge that Chadwick was not with us. So, you know, it shifted in sometimes in like laughter and then sadness, laughter, sadness, 
um, certainly in our scene work and behind the scenes. Um, but working with all the actors, it was just very familiar. It was, hi, Shakwe, hi, Angela, hi, this. We would, um, you know, I, I, I built a really great relationship with some of my actors and we would go around town trying different restaurants, trying different food, yes, you know. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, because, you know, as in the movie industry, there's a lot of hurry up and wait. So you're, if you've got downtime in between, you know, sets or weekends, we would find things to do um, around the area. So I didn't really feel that gaga, whatever, that most people do about other actors. I think they're just human beings and we're all creatives uh, in this space and opportunity. Um, so we really, you know, it was nice to just have that. And in terms of um, the fusion between Hollywood and Nollywood, obviously Nollywood is huge back in Nigeria. Um, what do you see in that space that you think um, we, we could, we could would adapt and adopt, uh, let me put it that way, to, to see a lot more um, faces like yours, you know, in the bigger films at the Oscars, for instance? Um, what, what do you think is missing and what would you add? I don't think I would add anything. I think, you know, I, I always go by the same thing that Tyler Perry said. Tyler Perry, Perry built his studios on, if they build, if he built it, they will come. I, th I don't think it should be a like Nollywood versus Hollywood. I think you can see a lot of um, proliferation of artists that are coming from Nollywood into Hollywood and vice versa in some of the films that I've seen. Um, so I don't think there's a stock interest. I think there's a, there is definitely a respect for both industries. And we're seeing that really in Western TV, the impact of Africa, the African diaspora, um, Nigerian films. I mean, I live in Miami. I live both here and in LA. And every time I say I'm a Nigerian, there's a lot of, there's a big Haitian community here, as well as Hispanic. They're like, Nollywood, do you know so-and-so? Do you know so-and-so? So it's Do, the do they expect you to know them? It's yes. expected. Yes. And so that's the power. So I don't really see that there's really a disparity right now. I think things are being bridged across in terms of food, fashion, um, you know, everything, music, Afrobeats is huge. Um, I had some friends that are my Latino friends and they were like, you saw Burner Boy, you missed it. I said, <laughs> you know, so I just, I, uh, I think there's a, there's a bridge that's been built right now. Definitely we have some ways to go, but I think the influence is coming from Africa and particularly Nigeria into the U.S. All right, let's come back to you personally now, um, looking at your career and the build up to, to where you are now. What's been what's your proudest moment? My proudest moment, I think, um, I think is now. Um, I just uh, I did not know that I had an arsenal of creativity uh, during the COVID time frame. Um, I really dug in deep in terms of what else I could do. And I started writing and um, that was wonderful to see. I wrote a pilot, I was shopping it around, HBO and other uh, were very interested. Um, and I was, re I was writing a short film, which I just, um, the executive produced, produced and starred in, and I'm currently in post-production. And it's, um, it's an area that I'm so excited about. I started my production company it's the first film under my production company called Chidera. And mm. it's basically, um, my mantra is, uh, should, should I say the reason why I started my production company is I wanted to bring female led stories from the African diaspora to the Western world in a very um, honorable and respect respectable and, and probably educational way. Um, so the film I currently have is a fictional narrative based on true facts from my heritage. Um, and I'm so excited about it. My team are excited about it. I've, I've gotten festivals, we're excited to see it as well. So I think that's where I'm proud. I'm proud of the fact that I've become, a, you know, a developing writer and now I'm a filmmaker as being a producer. So yes. Mm. And when you're not on set, so who's shocked by offsets? What do you do to, to let your hair down beyond the acting and the scripting and the filmmaking? I am Shukwe, the wife, <laughs> the mother. Um, I have two wonderful children. Uh, one that's a sophomore in um, university. He's a second year in university. And I have one on his way to university. He's a senior right now. Um, that keeps me grounded. Um, my husband, we just 
celebrated 25 years of marriage. That keeps me grounded. You know, sometimes I would go on set and the next minute I, I you know, let's just pound some yam, yeah. You know, so it was like, <laughs> I never lost myself. My, my, certainly my family made sure that I never had lost myself. They're like, okay, yeah, and they said, now yeah, I'm a mother, or yeah, uh, you're the wife, or you're the this, you're the whatever. So um, that's basically me. I love to eat. I love to um, meet people from different cultures. I love to travel. Um, that's that's basically me. All right, I, I, and as we as we wrap this up, um, just in terms of of your contribution to the diaspora and and the impact that you're making, how would you like to be remembered? I would love to be remembered as bringing love into everything that I I do, um, and bringing cohesiveness, um, infusing my culture into everything that I do, and allowing everybody to understand you know, where we artists are coming from in the African continent. You know, um, I want to educate the Western world, like I said, about what we do. I think they're interested in our stories now and I want to bring it to them in a very credible fashion. Um, and so I think those are the things that I want to be remembered, remembered as. I want to work on um, creative elements that are socially conscious um, and not just for the frivolity of it. I want to make sure that I leave a lasting impact. So whatever art I leave in this world can continue um, when I pass on. So something positive. All right, one last thing. Do you think this the sequel the, is going to be better than the first one? I can't wait for you to see it. So uh, you, it, you guys are going to be the judge, okay. you know. I can't say anything about it. It is um, it's definitely a bigger movie. It's a longer movie. Um, they've got a lot of new characters that are now coming into the frame. And we're dealing both with Wakanda and also Talakan, which is the underwater kingdom. So it, it, there's going to be a fusion, you know, a sensory fusion of a lot going on. So I don't think we're going to disappoint. You guys are going to love it. All right, Chokbaya Luko, thank you so much for doing this on Diaspora Network. Good luck with your work and looking forward to seeing you in bigger and, and better spaces as well. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me. I guess the audience will then be the judge of how successful the sequel will be. But the message here is that Nigerians stand out wherever they find themselves. And that's the show. You can catch other editions on our website, channelcv.com. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Let's do this again some other time.